Pirates and the Cardinals start a series tonight in St. Louis, Guy. And in a pennant race, every series is big, but boy, this one is as large as it comes at the moment. They'll keep getting bigger and bigger, I suppose. Well, two weeks ago here was fantastic. Not only not just the results, but just the whole atmosphere, the buzz, and everything at PNC Park. And I'm sure, I mean, there's always a buzz in St. Louis during baseball season. So let's find out. Let's head there. Pirates broadcaster Bob Walk kind enough to join us on the phone lines from St. Louis. Good morning, Bob. How are you? Morning, guys. How's everything going? Good. Pretty good. Thanks for coming on. You, uh, oh, no problem. You feeling a buzz out there? And <laughs> how's the mood of the team coming off that uh, tough trip to Colorado? Well, yesterday was uh, the day off, and I think it uh, probably came at a, at a good time. That wasn't a lot of fun in Colorado. Uh, the first time in, you know, first day in, you had that laugher where we lost, and it was, you know, everybody kind of like, okay, we'll turn the page after this. It, this kind of stuff, you know, happens. But in the last couple of uh, games, there were so many opportunities to where you know we could have uh, won those, and it was just another one of those situations that we've had a number of times this year, where I was just looking more from our offense, and then also uh, it was the first time our our pitching had kind of collapsed. Also, and the two of those things together made for a really bad three days. When you look at, you know, they haven't hit for Burnett, Bob. Uh, they do give him a 3-1 lead past the middle of the game, and he doesn't hold it. Liriano is worst outing of the year. Can you just brush that off as it's a tough place to pitch? Liriano had never pitched in that ballpark. Or, or, I guess my general question is, Locke hasn't been as sharp since the All-Star break. Are you noticing a breakdown in the pitching or not? Well, in certain situations, yeah. I mean, I, I will agree that, uh, that Locke, Hasn't been as good uh, than he was the first part of the year, but uh, in the game in uh, Colorado, I thought he looked just like he always has uh, yeah. in the first half of the season. It, you know, he's always on the edge of maybe being a little too wild, but he never gives up any base hits, uh, and that's what we saw from Locke in Colorado. So, you know, I don't know. I, I hope nothing is a trend. Uh, the pitching has been fabulous, and any time the numbers have been as good as. Uh, as they have been for the Pirates, you start wondering, are, are they going to start moving toward the average a little bit? And that that may happen, but you also hope that the offense starts moving toward the average the other direction and, and picks up the pace and helps out the pitching down the stretch. Bob, we uh, heard uh, the word, as I'm sure you have, that Andrew Lambeau is getting the call up uh, tonight, the, the minor league home run king. Just, just wondering, as a longtime player yourself, what what do you think the guys on the team and and we from what we've heard and felt this is a pretty close knit group in there. What do you think they think of Andrew Lambo and probably a guy to them that they haven't spent much time around? I wager who's kind of come out of nowhere this year. Yeah, he's going to have to prove himself to everybody. Uh, it's it for me. It's a simple thing. If he comes up and plays well and contributes to winning, uh, you know everybody's going to love him. Uh, if you have somebody that comes up from the minor leagues and uh, gets pushed out there at a critical time during a, a pennant race and doesn't do well, then, you know, the, the veteran guys are saying, you know, why are we you know, relying on this young guy? We, sh- we shouldn't be doing this. And, and that can be a, a little bit of a problem. Um, I, I think that um, it, it really does, you know, it, it's kind of a, I don't know how to say it. It almost seems like uh, it's, uh, it's not right, but it's the way it is. If these guys perform, then everybody takes them in. If they don't perform, then they can uh, become a little bit of a problem on the team with the veterans. It, it's really a simple thing, and I realize that that seems kind of cold, but that's the way it is. Every time you move up a level, Bob, you, you, there's an adjustment. Are you encouraged at all? The fact that he went from double-A to triple-A and his numbers hardly changed at all. The fact that he had more home runs at Indianapolis than he did in Altoona, does that make you think he might be able to make the jump from triple to the majors without a big drop-off, or is, it, is that more a mental thing? The thing that has me a little concerned was he kind of dropped off the radar. You guys kind of already mentioned that a little bit. He came out of nowhere. Uh, when he first came over here after that trade, he was highly touted. And and now not hearing a whole lot from him. And then after he's, he's just tearing up the minor leagues this year, it's taken some time for them to bring him up here. And I think even Neil has said some things on his radio shows that you know he's got a lot to do yet uh, before he's ready to come up here. So 
I'm thinking there's something, some kind of a flaw that we're not really aware of at this moment, Bill. And that's why the Pirates didn't want to bring him up. And because but on the other hand, you look at the home runs, you look at the RBIs, you look at our run production up here at the big league level, and it's like, well, how can you not bring him up? So we'll just have to, to see. I, I don't know what to think about. I don't know what kind of expectations right now to have with him out there. I'm, I know that there has to be some something going on why they didn't think he was ready yet. But you really get excited when you look at his numbers. So it, it, it's going to be interesting. I can't wait to see him out there. I want to see the bats. Uh, he could become a big, big boost for us. Do you think uh, because of those, uh, you know, the hesitation to bring him up, or, or, or are you suspicious that maybe Marte is going to go on the DL for a while? I don't think so. I mean, because the, the other day he was, uh, they said he's just got a bruised hand. So I don't think he's going to go on the DL. Uh, I, I would be surprised. It, uh, I, I don't. I've never heard of anybody going on the DL because of the bruise. So unless. There's something else going on with Marte that we didn't know about. I don't expect that at all. Okay. Well, when you look at some of the numbers, I mean, Adam Wainwright is obviously a great pitcher. Uh, the Pirates have, have a, his ERA against them is over five. I think it's the second worst ERA he has against any team in the majors. Uh, just wondering from, from your playing days even, when there's a particular hitter, even a, a, maybe a, an all-star hitter, that you've had a lot of success against yourself as a pitcher or as a batter, I mean, people think, oh, they're major leaguers, they're professional, but how much does that confidence factor, like Neil Walker and, and, and Andrew McCutcheon have kind of torn Wainwright up. So when that individual battle is happening, is there an actual advantage to the batter when he's had that success in the past against the guy? Yes, as long as it's a, a decent amount of bats. You know, if, if, you know the old saying, uh, small sample size, we hear that a lot about different things. It's true in this uh, case, if somebody is uh, – you know, three for five against somebody, I don't really care much about that. But when you see somebody that's, uh, you know, maybe uh, 12 for 30 off someone or even better than that, now you're getting up there to where now that means something. And you can really put a lot of stock into numbers like that. The guys and the players themselves, when they have that many at-bats, whether they're pitchers or hitters, then they know also without looking at any statutes or nothing, I hit this guy or I don't hit this guy. And that, that really is what kind of con- continues things. You you step into the box or you look in for a sign, you're already beat. Uh, a lot of times when you think, okay, this guy owns me, I have no idea what I'm going to do today uh, to get him out. And the other, the other side of that, too, uh, if you think you own somebody, you step in there with all the confidence in the world and you know that, okay, I, I hit this guy all the time and today's not going to be any – any different um you know that that's just the way it is pirates broadcaster bob walk joining us here on trib live radio ken laird and guy junker just a couple more minutes with bob there was a a piece in the post dispatch out in st louis today bob about the pirates cardinals rivalry and really the lack of of it sort of going back even to the 1800s uh according to them they'd only finished one two in the division or the league five times one of them i guess was 91 when you guys beat them uh by a you know, double digits. What what is the Cardinals' rivalry like to you? Have you did you when you played? Was it was it fierce? And do you see it developing at all here? No, it wasn't fierce. I wouldn't say. I mean, they were, uh, you know, somebody that especially, um, you know, in that year that you just mentioned was a '91. You had to respect them, but there was never any any rivalry like you know you would think something would be going on. I, you know, we had that. Uh, with the Phillies, uh, I thought that that was a back when I was playing. That was more of a uh, a, a rivalry series. Um, but I think here in in St. Louis, uh, their big rivalry is with the Cubs. That's the team that they they go with each other, you know, tooth and nail all the time. It doesn't make any difference. Cubs just came in here. They're having a bad year, and they stepped in here and they took two out of three from the Cardinals. Uh, so with us, no, there's there's nothing nothing really to talk about as far as a, a rivalry. Uh, a few years ago, uh, the coaches got in a fight, um, you know, each other behind the batting cage during batting <laughs> practice. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was uh, that was about as fired up as I've ever seen uh, either either team. But you know, some teams you do have that history with, and te- other teams you don't. And with the Cardinals, there's just really nothing there to talk about. Yeah, the Reds still seem to be the one that gets under everybody's skin. 
And maybe even the Brewers, yeah, even the, though they're not any good this year. Yeah, yeah the, the Brewers. It's just there's just nothing that ever been there with the Cardinals. It's just kind of a, a blah thing. Now, if we're starting a little uh, deal here over the next you know two or three years, where we're going to be battling these guys for the, the playoffs every year, then then that really is what creates a rivalry more than anything else. Is when they're, you're playing games with each other that really are meaningful and there's something on the line. Uh, I think that's what created the rivalry with the Phillies uh, 30 years ago. Uh, you know, both the clubs in the Eastern Division going back to the, the late 70s, where it was either going to be the Phillies or the Pirates. Phillies or the Pirates. Phillies or the Pirates. That creates a rivalry, and uh, I think that this could start one if it's us and the Cardinals for the next two or three, four years. Uh, but you have to have those games really be meaningful, something on the line, I think, to get that good rivalry going. Well, we appreciate your time, Bob. I know you and the team have a lot of uh, hotel rooms and uh, road trips to go on here the next couple weeks. So uh, I'm sure you enjoyed the day off. We appreciate you squeezing us in here this morning. Thanks, Walkie. Uh, no problem. No, no problem, guy. Ken, it's my pleasure. Anytime uh, you want to hear from me, just uh, give me a call. We appreciate that. Bob Block, uh, Pirates broadcast crew, and always awesome. Excellent on the analysis. He really love to is listen. Yeah, because, yeah, uh, you know, um, I enjoy all the guys that broadcast for the Pirates, but I, I think of all of them, Bob is the one that would be the most critical. I mean, I think he's the most blatantly honest about, you know what yeah. I mean? He wants also them to win, funny. but yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and I, 